Hi everyone, um, we're just waiting for some more people to arrive so feel free to get yourself a glass of water or something and um, we'll kick off shortly. Okay, so I think we will start the webinar now. So thank you so much for joining us here today. Welcome, my name is Michelle Bridgeford and I'm a Customer Success Manager at Reckon. I have the pleasure of hosting today's session. I'm joined with John Gajewski, who um, is also a Customer Success Manager. Now, um, if you haven't met John or myself, um, please feel free to note down our details. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to contact us. We um, would love to hear from you and um, always happy to, to have your feedback. So today's webinar is really designed to give you an understanding and an update on Reckon's new payroll solution. It's been a huge week for Reckon as Reckon Payroll went live last week. Um, and we're so excited as this is really the first taste of our next generation of technology. Um, so in this session, we're going to look at the new solution and what it looks like. John will give a little bit of a demo and we're going to see how it ties in with single touch payroll phase two. So the presentation should take around 45 minutes and we'll then take some questions from the group. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, simply type them into the question box and we'll go through them at the end. We'll strive to get through as many questions as you as possible, but if we don't answer your questions, we are um, we are noting them down and we'll we'll come back to you after the webinar. So a quick disclaimer before we move into the presentation, what you see and hear today is a very general, it's um, it's purely gui for guidance. We're not tax or BAS agents, so we, we can't offer taxation or payroll advice. Um, if you have any specific questions, be sure to, to reach out to your accountant or professional body. So we'll get started. So we're so excited to show you our new payroll experience, which, which went live last week. It's called Reckon Payroll. It's a huge upgrade to the payroll module within Reckon One, um, and it's also an upgrade to Payroll Premier. So it may look familiar to some of you and it is because it's the new look has been available to thousands of users of the Reckon Payroll mobile app for some time now and the feedback that we've received has been fantastic. So with Reckon Payroll, it's a brand new look and feel and user interface built on new technology. Um, and with the switch, it's, it's easier as well because um, your data is already there. So it makes, makes da data migration much simpler. So there's lots of um, improvements that we've made and really our goal is to, to make payroll as hassle-free as possible. One of the biggest benefits of the new Reckon Payroll is that submitting STP is now done within the system. Um, it's all embedded. You don't need to leave the payroll program to submit in a different program. We've also streamlined the menu options. So you no longer have to go to the navigation bar or payroll settings or Reckon Gov Connect. The simple menu options of Reckon Payroll get you there from one place. And finally, the new payroll experience introduces our STP phase two compliance. We have an easy to follow STP two checklist 
to ensure that all your items are transitioned to the new requirements. As a couple of extra bonuses, we're also improving the employee experience. There's a free app called Reckon Mate, and employees can check their pay slips, leave balances, superannuation, and more, all from the convenience of their smartphone. And additionally, the mobile app will be available from September at no extra cost. And this is ideal for um, if you're wanting to manage payroll on the go. Okay, so this is for Reckon One. If you use Reckon One, you'll now see that there's a green banner that's appeared at the top of the screen. This indicates that the new payroll is available. And some key points on this banner are the date, the 1st of October. That's the date that we switch over to STP phase two reporting. So you do need to have converted to the new experience and upgraded to STP phase two by then. There's also a learn more button. And if you click this, you'll learn more about the switch to the new experience and the transition to STP phase two. On the right side of the banner, there is a check it out button. So you click on this when you're ready to check it out, which we are going to do now. So I will hand the line over to my colleague, John. And he will give you a little bit of a demo. John, are you there? There I am. I think you should be able to hear me. Thank you very much. We can hear you. Uh, I will just uh, turn on my screen, turn on my camera. Um, terrific. Um, and go show screen. You should see my screen in a moment. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, well, thank you again, Michelle. Thank you everyone for attending this session. Um, we will um, happily go through and show you as much as we can about this um, new Reckon uh, payroll experience. Um, what I'd like to start with is, you know, ha uh, I'm going to take you on a journey. I've got a book here which uh, needs to be upgraded. So we're actually going to do a live upgrade test um, of my book and uh, get us over into um, STP2 compliance. Now, um, it's check it out, uh, which will get us going um, to our uh, reckoned payroll. Um, what I want to describe is uh, there's going to be a slight difference in how you enter it, depending whether you're coming from uh, an existing reckoned payroll book, as most of you are now, uh, to someone coming in here for the first time. And um, one of the big key uh, differences with the new payroll, as Michelle outlined, is that the Reckon Gov Connect will be, is embedded now inside the um, payroll uh, process. That has forced us to make some changes to where you enter. Uh, as you well know, we had to do a authentication every time you entered uh, Reckon Gov Connect. Now that's happening when you enter into either the uh, Reckon One book for the first uh, payroll module for the first time or later when you actually uh, log into the Reckon portal. So you'll be asked for a security code, which we sent to your phone, which you'll um, enter in. Um, this security code actually comes out of the uh, Reckon Gov Connect uh, details. Um, for new users, uh, it'll be to set it up. So uh, they'll be uh, asked to uh, set up a two-factor authentication. So they'll just set it up to their phone number. And um, for new users, totally new users to Reckon One, the first step will be to create the STP entity. So it's going to ask you uh, for your company name uh, or your company number, ABN number, and um, you put your number in, uh, it'll from the database, it'll find the name, uh, you select it, uh, you'll give the details, it'll ask you to enter in a branch number. Now, in most cases, that branch number will be 001, um, the next popular one is 002, and only in very, very small cases uh, will the number be any different. Um, 
So just entering 001 in most cases, and then the last three digits of the ABM, just to confirm that you are on the screen and continue. Um, and that will then uh, give you the details of what's going to be created. Uh, we're going to both create a book uh, and an STP entity in one hit. So that's your big change um, for coming, uh, for starting up from scratch with Reckon. You'll be asked for all these company details um, to start with, getting that M MFA set up, and um, then you'll be able to get into the book. So I'll leave that there now and swing over uh, to have a look at a nice live session here. So um, I'll just click on check it out. And um, because I've got a book, I should be able to uh, swing me straight in. Um, if I haven't MFA'd yet, uh, it's uh, one, once a day activity, once every 24 hours, um, uh, I'll be asked to uh, MFA and then be let in. I'm just waiting for those uh, uh, that to let me in. I'm not sure what's happening here today. Um, here we go, and I'm in. Um, what I what you'll get the first time uh, you come in and until you complete the ready checklist is this information screen. On the right hand side, we've got a nice YouTube uh, channel which has got some how to guides um, on on doing. Um, sorry, you've got our our uh, help index showing our guides on how to do things. Uh, if you explore our YouTube channel, there is a channel there for. Um, uh, video how-tos, if you prefer a visual rather than something that's uh, spelt out. The uh, second one here is a guide on uh, completing the STP2 checklist. There are a couple of videos there. I strongly recommend you read read the screen and work through the videos to, uh, to um, understand fully uh, what lies ahead of you. And uh, when you're ready to go, um, click on this uh, upgrade and start preparing for STP phase two. Now, don't be in a hurry to click on that because what we'll see is that um, this is a bit of a point of no return. Up until this time, you can move between this new view of uh, Reckon Payroll and the old traditional view in your old, uh, in the uh, Reckon One book payroll module. So until you've done the STP2, you can move between the two. What you do in one will be visible in the other. And that's just a reflection that behind what you see in front of you, it'd be something very new, uh, is the same old, uh, the same structure. So uh, after you work your way around the screens, you'll very quickly see a lot of familiar things in familiar ways. So Reckon uh, Payroll is a combination of the new and the old. The new graphic interface with a different way of interacting with the database, which I, I hope you will agree with me, it's much smoother, much neater, much faster, much more logical, much easier to work with. Uh, and what block lies behind that, all that uh, knowledge you've accumulated from your your use in the Reckon One payroll, uh, you'll see that behind it, it's all the same there, so you'll be able to apply uh, what you do. So, don't, uh, but once you cl click here on the start and pre start preparing for STP phase two, you'll lose that interconnectivity. So, only uh, proceed past this point when you have uh, are prepared, are ready to commit to doing your pay in the new experience. Um, you do need to have this phase uh, two checklist done before the 30th of September, because as of the 1st of October, we're reporting STP phase two only. Um, when you start uh, this um, checklist, you need to complete it before you can do your next pay run. So choose your time carefully. Uh, probably the best time will be just after you've completed a pay run, and that will give you the maximum time to prepare um, to prepare your file to familiarise yourself with the program before your next pay run is done. Now, one other thing that we do need to um, think about is uh, because we're um, playing around with permissions to the ATO, um, your users have to be properly permissioned. So uh, all users uh, to Reckon Payroll must have permissions of at least uh, Reckon uh, the Payroll Administrator or administrator. So uh, yourselves, uh, um, as owners of the book and administrators, you're fine. It's when you're dealing with other people, with if you have junior staff or with your accountants and bookkeepers, uh, you do need to ensure that they are either 
payroll administrator or um, or payroll um, or, or administrator. Without those permissions, you'll get an error message coming in saying you, know, you don't have sufficient permissions. Now you can do um, that, um, I'll show you in a moment. Um, you can do that switch back in the book. Uh, so over here, just in the top corner here, these three dots, this is the product switcher. You can click on that and you can move into uh, the other products. Uh, payroll, which is this one, our standard Reckon One, uh, Reckon Gov Connect, it's still there. You won't need to be going there with this new version, but it's still there in the background and any other program you might have. So I'm just gonna go switch to Reckon One and um, uh, Pick my book, uh, where was I? I've got lots of books here. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go, in consulting. And what I can do is go back into the settings uh, and come into users and, um, and we'll have the user permissions. It will see all our users here, their permissions levels, and we can uh, just uh, uh, say super user. Uh, I can just click, um, Click on that to open them and set the permission level we need. Another place this might happen is you um, uh, back on the portal, you may have set them up as a staff user. Um, so just go into um, uh, the permissioning here and ensure uh, that they've got the appropriate permissions. So, um, they're the sort of things you need to do to ensure that your users now are, have sufficient permissions to go uh, in. Um, part of that as well is if you've got a junior user, um, uh, they do they prepare the pays, you overlook it, you submit the STP entity, your junior user has never gone into Reckon Gov Connect, now they will need to have an account and you will need to share your STP entity to them as well. So keep those in mind if, if that situation applies to you. Um, I'll just click on here onto um, pay runs. You see these little app queues um, uh, pop up. Uh, so um, you can go take the tour or uh, uh, once you're familiar with it is uh, to uh, log out. And this is, a, let's just, I'd like to just do the geography of the uh, new record payroll. Um, what we have, the main center here are these five menu options. Now, this replaces everything that um, you need it to go to in uh, the traditional record one for your payroll. So no more taking some things out of the navigation bar, some things going into payroll settings, others even in Reckon Gov Connect. No, it's all in here. It's all accessible from one of these areas. So that's going to be a fantastic, um, a fantastic um, time saver for you. Everything's in one place, very easy to get to very quickly. Um, the screen here, uh, we're on pay runs. Uh, it's uh, three screens on the left-hand panel. We've got all our pay runs, uh, previous pay runs, and they're ordered by the financial year. So we can go see other years by selecting the appropriate year and seeing those, uh, those pay runs. In the middle of the screen, uh, we have uh, the details of what's highlighted here. Um, it's a completed pay run. Um, we've got a little eye here. If we want to see the details, just click on that eye and the details of that person's pay comes up. Um, on the top right, we've got options because this is a complete pay run. Uh, we can revert to, uh, revert to draft. Uh, if we had to make a correction. And then when we send to the uh, ATO, it'll be as a resubmission. So it'll go through as an update event or a, um, um, or, 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 or a full replacement. So uh, it's all easy in a simple clicks. This right-hand panel will give us the year to date for our, uh, for our pays this financial year. Um, so that's great. So to do a new pay run, um, we've got this really handy add new option here. So uh, click on add new, you can add a new pay run, add a new employee. So adding new employees when you're in the middle of a pay run is a lot easier now than previously. So I'm just gonna do a new pay run and let's see what happens. We get this little panel open up on the sidebar here and uh, we can, um, we've got a note here that we're still on phase one. Um, 
I'm going to go through select my weekly schedule. It's all uh, set up for the next page. I'm running a little bit behind time. And uh, the people attached to the schedule are marked here. Now, if, um, if I wanted to add more employees to this particular schedule just for this one, I can click them. If it's greyed out, it's probably because this guy is uh, made inactive or even perhaps terminated, and we can just click on view to see more details about that. Um, these app queues will be jumping up uh, whenever you're going into something for the first time. So this, uh, this employee is not properly completed, uh, completed yet, so he can't be in a pay. Um, so uh, we'll give him a miss and think about him some other time. So we'll go back to our pay runs um, and uh, we'll just uh, kick one off again um, and just leave it with our current crop of employees. And uh, everything else is the same. Click on create and the pay run's being created. And we'll see another pay run come up here in draft mode. Now, in draft mode, you will see that the symbol next to the employee is a little pencil allowing us to edit them. And just coming, this coming up. Okay, so we've got our two employees. Um, we have. Uh, two lines, we can edit pay runs here, our options, we can delete pay run. Um, so if I go edit pay run, and I will, this will enable me, enable me to change the pay run, add another employee in if I wanted to, uh, to modify one, I will, one employee, just click on the pencil, his details opens up in the side, um, and what have we got? We got earnings, we've got a bonus, nothing there, uh, ordinary allowances, you've got a car allowance. So to change a car allowance uh, or anything, we just click on that item name and it'll open up. So we've got uh, car allowance room. So this looks like it's kilometers per, cents per kilometer. Let's just say did 155, make that change. If we had a customer or a project to attach to, we can make the selections out. I don't think I have a project on this one. Yes, we have. Uh, you will, to, to utilize this projects, of course, you do need to have the projects module activated on your book. Um, so that's done and that will get updated. We'll see both change here on the panel and here under the allowance. If we wanted to add something else, we could just click on add and add the allowance, whatever it might be. Just say there was a meal allowance today. Let's say it was $20. Done, add. And all set to go. And same with the second one, we could do the second one. Right, once we've made all our changes, uh, if we look at the bottom, we have the option to mark as paid. So I'll click on that and we'll see that our pay run will move from draft to paid. And we down here have two more options, send pay slips, so we'll click on that and uh, we can and email our pay slips to all the employees. If we want to view them, we'll just click on view pay slips and from there we can print it if we need to. Okay, so um, I won't send them. Um, if I do send the pay slips, that pay slip will disappear. Next, continue to declaration. So here is where we send it to the ATO. We just click on one click and we're into our declaration. So we'll just do our sign off. And tick that off and click submit to the ATO. And that's on its way. And we can see that our status has now changed from paid to done. So we can see whether things have been, um, whether pay runs have been submitted to the ATO uh, by the status there, and there's not that button to uh, continue to declaration there. Um, 
so that pay run is done, the SDP is underway. So if we go to our top uh, menu option called compliance, we've got an SDP item in there. And this is basically showing you what you normally would see in your GovConnect uh, account. Um, all of that is now visible here. We've got our latest submission, which we've done today, it's all pending, uh, and our previous ones are under previous submissions. So um, yeah, that's it. So there we go, uh, pay run completed. Um, no more switching out of the uh, software to go into another software to submit your ATO. So nice, fast, easy. Now, just to uh, explore a little bit more, let's, uh, if we go into employees, we'll see our employee record. Um, we've got all our employees on the left-hand side. Our main screen will show their details. And on the right, we have the year-to-date figures for that employee. Let's wait for that to refresh. It's coming through. Which one is this taking so long? I'll just force that on. Right, so uh, here we have me and uh, here's my uh, year to date totals uh, for this financial year. If I wanted to see it from a previous financial year, I just uh, click on change. Now, if I wanted to edit details here, then I can either click on edit details and go through the whole thing. And what you'll find, and this is what you'll see uh, when you're creating your employee as well, um, is uh, you'll find a path across the top. So telling you what the stages are of the entire process to set up a employee or to edit his full record. Um, so we just start at the top and work our way down. So one thing you'll notice here that um, there's a lot more information available on each screen now. So um, you'll find that you're going to be moving less and less between screens, which is going to save you a lot of time. Scroll down, make all the choices necessary. Um, and when you finish this screen, you can just click on continue and we'll go to the next screen. You can see how our path at the top is rest us to the next one. We can add our leave entitlements, add leave. Um, oh, I'm just going to make this easy. Uh, let's say I'm just going to do 152 hours per year. Leave start date, let's say that was, um, oh, let's, uh, sorry, um, leave start per annum, leave start date, let's just say that was, um, the 1st of January, so on the 1st of January each year, I'll get my full full entitlement. You've still got the same familiar um, familiar ones, I'll add on uh, pay on termination, yes, this is annual leave, I'll need to pay that out uh, when I finish. I can add other leave in items like um, do my uh, personal leave, uh, 76 hours, start that, Pay on termination, no. Add another leave, sure. What other leave have I got? Just keep on going through and adding whatever I need. Um, service leave per annum, I don't know, something like 32.9, something like that. Um, and uh, no, save and continue. So we can just keep on going and save and continue should take us on to the next screen as well. Again, uh, we don't have to make the decision to go to the next screen, think about what it is. No, uh, we've just got a nice click uh, to send us there. Now, if something's not right, um, we'll need to... Um, right, uh, click that other leave, excellent, save and continue. So if you've made an error, just look back, it will be outlined to you in red, uh, make the appropriate change and then continue on. And now we've gone to the next screen. Uh, if we're doing initial year to date, um, I'll skip this one if that's necessary, if you've got other details. Uh, this is where you'll do things like um, uh, current leave balances can be added here. Uh, your bank account details can be added here. Um, your superannuation accounts can be added here. Um, so 
name and continue. And to go to the last screen. Again, a nice little flow from one from one sector to the next. We don't need to decide which sector is the next one. We're just taken there. And finally, come to the pay setup where we can set up our our pays. We've got casual 25% loading. Uh, we've got $33 an hour, quantity of 15. I'll leave it as it is. No allowances, no deductions, no company. Uh, contributions and our super guarantee SR 11%. Excellent. All done, finished. Our employee is more updated. Um, we went through the uh, full setup here. If you're only doing a section, you, you, you'll see these edit buttons on each section. So that will just allow you to do that section. So um, yeah, always good to, um, very easy to jump in and make any changes necessary to your, uh, your employees. And we got all the, um, normal uh, tabs around leave uh, about our our pays that we're familiar with all on these sections here uh, sub menu sub menu items so very easy to go through okay um, and of course in the reporting tab um, we can uh, uh, payroll summary so we can just go through that one Let's just do that to there. And now we've got all our employees paid um, for our payroll summary. Uh, payroll details, generate year report, uh, set the date range. Oops, do one to the 31st, generate year report. And our pay details here are um, now, uh, these detailed reports, unlike summary reports, you've got a few more options to print and um, save to other formats. So if you wanted a CSV file or a PDF or a Word document, you can choose to uh, do that there. But the really big one here is uh, settings. And this is uh, where you'll probably come to when you're starting new books, because this is the guts of the base, uh, base um configurations that you can set through here. So a lot easier to um, view everything in there, the drop in there and to um, to uh, change the details. Um, uh, we'll set the details, come in and change things as you need. Um, bank accounts, um, superannuation funds, add in your superannuation funds. Just look for the uh, create, super, uh, create button at the top right. Uh, payments, so uh, if you're doing um, your bank accounts for your uh, different sorts of payments, um, whether you want to uh, create an entry for for um, the employee's net pays to your bank ledger account, make sure that's ticked, otherwise unticked. Um, set up your pay schedules, um, pay items, the same pay items you're familiar with are all here, are done in their same categories. If, uh, easy, uh, easy to display, easy to see, easy to access. Um, and uh, uh, the other things down here, single touch payroll will tell you which version you're in at the moment. We're still in phase one. Okay, um, that's about it. Uh, on the top right here, we have our identity where we can sign out and go to help and support. On the left hand side, we've already seen the product switcher, um, but next to it, uh, if you're accessing many books, you've got the book switcher where you can go through and uh, select the books uh, you may want to um, access. So all very easy at your fingertips, um, very easy to navigate, uh, quick to um, get that information in and get it updated. So with that covered, what I'd like to do is just uh, now have a quick look at this ready checklist. And as I said, um, don't go there until you're ready to commit read the notes, have a have a look at the video, and then upgrade and start preparing for STP phase two. You'll get a final warning um, that you can't switch back to the traditional view, uh, go to upgrade. What we've done is made this as simple as possible. And this checklist we've um, uh, broken up into four parts. And the idea is that um, what this checklist does, it uh, has a look at what you've got in your uh, payroll setup, compares it to what's needed for STP2 compliance, 
and uh, gives us an alert to say, hey, you need to review some things for compliance. So we're going to go through each of these sections. We'll do one fairly intensively and uh, go easy on the others. And we'll click on that and have a look what we need to do. Now, prepare employees. Now, all of these screens will have much the same sort of format, our title, uh, a bit of information about it, and clear a guide to what you need to do. Um, and in the table below are the items that need to be reviewed. Anything with a a yellow alert, we need to address, we need to put in the missing information. Um, anything that's already STP2 compliant won't be seen in this list. To see those, just come over here, show all employees, just click on that, and anyone who is already STP compliant uh, will show up here, but they won't have the alert symbol next to them. Um, so uh, let's just go through. Um, we need to uh, add an income type. We need to add in an employment type. And uh, if we've got a foreign resident to um, uh, select a home country. So take our first one. Um, he's a full-time worker and we need to select the income type. Now, these dropped out boxes have the only allowable options. So uh, just remember these options are for ATO purposes. They're not some sort of description of the status of the employee or um, any, any of his position, the accounting process or in his uh, employment journey. No, these are all here for the ATO purposes. So we need to select these categories that are essentially designed by the ATO um, for this employee. So his income type, probably the most common one will always be salary and wages. Um, small business, micro businesses closely held may apply. Um, you may be uh, uh, in rural areas, you might be uh, having a seasonal worker program, voluntary agreements. Um, anyone who's made a voluntary agreement with the uh, ATO or is one of those industries like shearers where one exists. And uh, foreign workers, um, you know, the old backpackers under working holiday maker. So I'll select salary and wages. Next thing I need to go to is our employment type. So again, click the drop down, and these are our only choices. Um, this time uh, it's a full time, and we make that selection. He's a resident, and we've already got the tax scale. And the home country here, there's no option, need, need to change this, and we're not invited to change anything. Go to our second employee as well. He's a full timer, so we might uh, say if he's a closely held person, we'll select that. Um, full time employment, um, uh, employment type. Let's select full time. He's a resident. Again, no other country requirement. Uh, our next guy, um, he is a foreign resident, so we're going to select holiday maker. Um, Time he's a casual. Um, I'm not being asked for a home country, which is interesting. I would have to explore why that is the case. Notice with some of these columns, you have no no drop down arrows. We can't change them here. We'd need to drop back into the employee record to make any changes to these. So if you see an employee and say, hey, that's not right, um, save what you're doing, go back, uh, review his uh, employee setup, uh, make what necessary changes, then come back in. Um, now let's go Mr. Sukwinda, let's just say he's a, sorry, he's a full timer as well. Let's just say he's a full time as well, resident, again, nothing done. Okay, now we don't have to do all of this in one sitting because we've got the save button. So before we leave, always click on that save button and this will save whatever changes you made um, to, um, uh, to the system. Now, it came up here, it said one item failed. Okay, so I, uh, because I've got uh, Johnny G has a um, foreign resident, um, there's something wrong in my setup there. Uh, I'll need to view that in my employee setup. So I might go there now. Uh, just, uh, okay, okay, cancel that, we'll save, okay, that will be saved, let's go to employees, okay, okay, where's my Johnny G, what's the problem with Johnny G, he's not a completed setup, um, email, um, 
I need a date of birth. So I'll just go uh, edit here. I'll just do the section there. Um, I need a second.com date of birth. Uh, 01 slash 01 slash 1980. Uh, done. Okay. Um, Okay, I might um, what I might do just for the sake of it, I'm going to delete this employee uh, and uh, get on with our business uh, of doing our ready checklist. Now I've got my employees, it's got the green tick because our Problematic guy I've taken uh, taken out. So first one, success, move to the next one, do the earnings, the same sort of thing here. Uh, with again, description of what this is about, what we need to do and the table of items that need to be addressed. Notice we have two sections here, variable earnings and other earnings. Now if I look down through other earnings, I don't see any boxes here. Um, all we're going to do is if we don't need any of these, we can disable or delete them so they don't get um, upgraded. Um, if that's the case, then if we ever need them in the future, we will need to recreate them. Okay, uh, variable, if I show all earnings items, no, none there already. Um, it's done, so bonus, active current time, phase two type, bonuses and commission directors fees or variables. So I just take that. Paid parental leave, uh, not, not, not will have to be variable. Don't know if that's right, but it's the only option there. I'll save that, uh, two items saved, okay. And we go back to our ready checklist and another green tick. Terrific, and go through our allowances and we'll do the same. Car allowance, um, say, tax cents per kilometre, car allowance tax cents per kilometre. Uh, that's a um, job keeper, another. Okay, we'll do other. Select other and we've got a box opening up in our subtype. So once more information. So what is it, home office uniform, blah, blah, blah. they will have to be general. Um, sometimes you might find I say, what do, what do I pick here? Um, Remember these uh, categories were set by the ATO for their purposes. So you just need to make that assessment of what is the best um, best category for this item and make your selection. Okay, when everything's done, we can click save. And all those items have been accepted. Terrific, all done. Uh, just go back and do our last one, our leave. And what we find is we've got, um, we've got something else. Yep, all our main leaves are already STP2 compliant, so we don't need to do anything there. So compassionate leave is what's the one? It'll have to be other. A family and domestic violence. Again, other's the best choice there. RDO, um, time off in lieu, probably that's what it is. Um, and save. Again, all items saved, okay. Terrific, we've got our green ticks, so we've done everything we need to do. Um, one other thing that we can do, check other items, review the following to see if there's any action to take. Check earnings and allowances for other leave. Now, the reason this is here, is just in the event that um, the big one of the big changes with STP2 is that leave has to be reported separately. So in some circumstances, some leave items you may have used as a earnings item or an allowance item, well, they'll have to change. So this is your last chance to have a look at anything and if something is not needed, you can uh, disable it or delete it. So it's not, um, so it's not uh, converted across. So when that's all done, we're all ready to go. We can now switch to STP phase two. So just click on 
click on that and it will tell us that we're switching over STP phase two and we're done. And if we go now to our compliance and check STP two, we should see it notify us. Oh, sorry, I've gone to the wrong one. I need to go to settings. And we go to a single touch payroll and we can see STP version phase two. So we're all set to go to do our pay run in, um, in our uh, phase two um, format. All done. So um, that's it. Uh, a bit of time to um, familiarise yourself with the new view. But as you look around, I think you'll uh, find that you find it's a lot easier to get around and a lot faster to fix things, um, to update things, to add things. And, uh, and as you click around, you'll start seeing the familiar uh, pieces that you've worked with in the traditional Record One payroll. Um, so do spend a bit of time and explore and understand and, um, uh, and um, uh, uh, enjoy the shorter time that we've got uh, to, to process your pays. Just to finish off, um, just talk about a couple of things that are going to happen um, when you look back into your book. Um, if I go back into my book, uh, stay logged in, I might just click on my uh, dashboard. Our, we don't no longer have a banner across the top about STP2. When you click on payroll, what you see now, you don't get that full option items that we had previously. Um, we've only got the one payroll. We'll click on that. That will take us into the new experience. If you go into settings and payroll settings, um, again, only two options here, uh, payroll setup um, over here, and that just swings us off into the new, uh, new payroll experience. Okay. Um, the other thing is if, with your employees, they're still here um, as well. Um, they're still in your list here. Um, and um, if you open up their record, uh, again, you'll st still see the same thing here for the general tab with their basic information. But if you go into any of the other tabs, you don't see that information there and you'll get a link to send you off to Rec and Payroll. So all that information is uh, now in the new experience and not here in the module. So, now I can no longer do a pay run in Reckon 1. I, it'll switch me into the new Reckon payroll experience. What is still here is uh, things like your SuperStream processing. So to do your SuperStream, you'll still come in here, Reckon uh, to payroll, SuperStream, um, and create a report and work out um, what needs to be paid out for your forwarding of your super contributions. Um, if you're using ABA files, uh, that's it here as well, um, here under bank payments. So any employee with um, bank details we, will be set aside here in bank payments and you'll come in here to create your bank payments file and create the ABA file that you'll upload to the ATO website. So those functions are still in here. Um, certainly if you are using things like uh, projects and timesheets, um, you'll, uh, you'll have uh, access to those uh, through your Reckon 1. Just do that authentication again. Uh, two, eight, six, two. And Valid code, didn't receive code, let's try that again, 814, oh, and we're back in. And um, when you view things, uh, you still have access to all your normal um, normal um, modules. If you're using track time and timesheets, um, you can set the timesheets here and they will flow into the new payroll. Same thing with um, projects. Um, um, 
if you you'll have a field inside um, the new reckon payroll to assign it to a project. Um, so that's it from me. Well, I hope you enjoy this uh, new payroll experience. I'll hand back to um, to Michelle to uh, wrap it up for us. Michelle. Thank you, John. Okay. Now I'll just. Okay. Thanks very much. John, um, so another fantastic benefit that I touched on earlier is um, with the new experience, all employees will have, um, well, actually not employees, this is actually the Reckon Payroll mobile app. So this is going to be available to you soon, free of charge, um, and it's interoperable with Reckon One and Reckon Payroll. So um, you'll have a choice of how to process payroll, either on the web, on the mobile, or both. So you, you may be more comfortable with a mobile device, but perhaps don't want to use the computer so much, um, or if there's um, potentially accountants on, partners on the line, um, potentially similarly with a client. So in this instance, you can process payroll on the mobile app um, and your accountant, if required, can monitor it in Reckon Payroll. So from September, you can download the app from the Reckon App Store, from the App Store, and um, you simply use your Reckon One login, and it's completely free. The other benefit is for employees. We have um, an app called Reckon Mate. This is available now, and it's a mobile app to enable employees to access their payroll information in Reckon One. So there's, there's over 500,000 employees that currently get paid in Australia using Reckon software. Um, so Reckon Mate allows them to see their pay slips and view and maintain their personal records. So later on, we'll be adding features such as making the ability to leave, make leave requests, um, employee onboarding and superannuation details. So we're, we're really looking to offer employees more features that are that's within the Reckon products. So keep your ears open because more communication will be coming on, on this. Now, if you need further help, please don't hesitate to, to pick up the phone and talk to us. There's John and myself in the support team, uh, or sorry, in the CSM team. We have BDMs as well, and, um, and we also have a support hub um, with a friendly support team. So I've had a quick look and I can see that there's quite a few questions that have come through. We will address these shortly. Before we do, I have prepared some frequently asked questions which we'll go through, which may answer uh, one or two of the questions there. Now, if you do need to head off, thank you so much for your time today. We hope you've found it to be useful and can see what an improved experience it is. There will be a short survey at the end and we'd greatly appreciate it if you could fill that out because it really helps us in putting these webinars together. So if you have any questions, now is a good time to send them through um, because we'll move into frequently asked questions and then we'll open up and take the questions from the group. Okay, so frequently asked questions. Here we go. Just bear with me one moment. I just have to sh change the screen around. Okay, can I use the new payroll before moving to STP2? Yes, you can um, start using the payroll as soon as you migrate, uh, but you do need to be mindful that you need to transition to STP2 before your first pay run in October. The next one here is, can I continue using Reckon 1 to process payroll while I migrate to STP2? And the answer here is no. Once you start migrating to STP2, Reckon 1 and the new Reckon payroll are no longer interoperable. So this is a really important point. Once you start migrating to STP2, you need to use the new Reckon payroll for the next pay run and you also need to complete the STP2 migration. So we, we highly recommend starting the migration soon after a pay run's been completed, just so you have maximum time to finish doing the checklist before the next pay run. The next one here, can I still produce my ABA file or bank payments file? Yes, the answer is you'll still produce the file 
as you have been doing through Reckon 1. Okay. Question four, how do I get to Reckon Gov Connect from the new payroll experience to send my STP report to the ATO? So the submission, as John mentioned, of STP is now embedded in the program. So you don't have to go to another program to submit STP. After you complete a pay run, simply look for the continue to declaration button and that's how you will do it. And the last question here is, an employee of mine, an employee of mine prepares the pay runs and I submit the STP reports to the ATO. Does the new payroll experience allow my employee to submit the STP report without my authority? Now, because the new payroll experience embeds the Reckon Gov Connect functions, the user of Reckon Payroll automatically has the ability to submit STP reports. However, to use the new payroll experience, the user must have payroll administrator or administrator permissions. Also, the user must have the Reckon Gov Connect account for MFA purposes to the ATO. Okay, so we will open up now to other questions. Now I'll just get these questions here and then we'll go through them. Okay, and John, we might need to have you come back on as well. Right, let's see what we've got here. Okay, can we use initials for payroll number or does it still does it need to be an actual number still? Payroll number? Yeah. Uh, don't follow that. Employee number can be alpha, uh, need to be alpha numerics. Okay. Um, not sure what they mean by a payroll uh, number. Okay, so maybe if we can get more information on that one, that might be helpful. Um, yeah, now we've had some people ask if the recording will be available. Yes, it will be sent out. Um, and yeah, so you'll you'll all get a copy of the webinar. And we've, um, okay, so will all employee details migrate from the old Reckon 1 to the new automatically? That's the first one there, John. Okay, uh, well, there's really no uh, migration involved because the new experience is uh, around the way it's presented to you. So it's the uh, graphic interface and it's in, uh, interaction with the database that's the new bit. Um, but the database itself, itself is still the same database. So there's been no migration, so everything's available. Great. Um, the next question here is when setting up the new payroll and I click complete company setup as step three in the new payroll, nothing happens. I just get a flash of three dots and it goes back to complete company setup and the screen okay. doesn't change. Okay, I've, that... I've had that with one or two clients. Um, we seem to resolve that by, um, uh, by clicking that complete company setup uh, a few times. Uh, Great, I'm not okay. quite sure why it's happening, um, but um, it appears as if it's trying to set up an STP entity for you again, but it's not going to do that because it already exists. And uh, by just pressing it a, a few times, um, it does seem to uh, resolve itself and let you in. Great. Uh, we have a question here, what is MFA? So the MFA is the multi-factor authentication. It's the, when you um, need to go, when you submit your STP and um, you go to GovConnect, you get a, a number sent to your phone, that's the MFA. So you need to um, have the multi-factor authentication basically um, to be able to, to access it. Okay. It's just another level of security. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, so someone's asked, can you please explain closely held payee? Um, I think that's a question for your accountant. Okay. All right. Uh, something to do with um, businesses that uh, are run solely by family members who are also okay. owners of the uh, yeah, please, I'm sure your accountant will give you a far better, easier to understand uh, explanation. Yes, sure. 
Um, I have super user access, but when I go to reckon payroll, it says I don't have user permission. Uh, is That's that because, yeah. You've got to be payroll job. administrator or administrator. Or administrator. So if you can go in and change the settings to administrator or payroll administrator, yeah. so you should be able to access it. Yeah, your administrator will have to do that for you. And when that's changed, uh, you'll be able to go straight in. Beautiful. Um, okay, the next question here is, I did my payroll end of financial year and sent the reports to the ATO, but have received a message from them to say, I've not completed the, finan the finalisation successfully for the end of financial year. Just wondering if I've missed something. I have a look at the message from the ATO as to why they didn't accept it and that will give you a clue to where the error is. So you'll need to go back into your pro program, make uh, find that error, make the change and uh, resubmit your end of financial year report again. Great. Um, okay, here we go. The next one. I'm part way through a BAS period, July to September the 23rd. Is there any benefit of waiting until the end of September before transitioning to STP phase two? No, that's got nothing to do with it. It's all about the style of the re STP report. It doesn't have anything to do with the way you store your accounting information. Right, okay. Now, the person who asked about the admin accesses have just come back and said, John, I also have admin and payroll access. I would uh, leave yourself as uh, just admin access. Just admin? Okay. Uh, have one, uh, just the one of the permission roles, not multiple. Uh, when you do yeah. multiple, the system might uh, just give you the lesser of those that you selected. Okay. Um, do you have to switch individual an individual employee one at a t individual employees one at a time? You have to do the whole book. Yeah. Uh, as you're um, doing the SDP checklist, you can uh, at any time click on the save button to save what you've done and come back and complete later. Um, but everything has to be completed before you do your next pay run. Yeah, but you can't do a bulk batch of individual of employees, can you? They individually, can you do multiple employees at once? No, because you you've got a table of items. Each employee is one item, and you select one item, go to the second item, go to the third item, and you need to do it. If you've got multiple books, then you'll need to do it for each book. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so here was this question here that we started with. Can we use initials for the employee number or does it need to be an actual number? No, it can be alpha and numerics. It could be alpha all letters, numerics. Could be all numbers, it could be a mix, but they need to be yeah. only those two types. So okay. no characters, no stops. Okay. Um, and we've got one Last question here, do employees get two payment summaries, one in STP1 and the other in STP2? No, there will only be one. No. Yeah, okay. I think that's all the questions, John. I'm just um, having a look. Just a, just a variation on that. Um, no, that's right, that's right. They will, um, uh, even if you terminate, an employee this financial year before you upgraded, they're still part of your record, they'll still be included in the um, uh, finalisation at the end of the financial year. So yeah, they'll yeah. only be financial year. Okay, actually I'm there sorry. are a few more. There's a, so someone's also asked um, if we could provide a YouTube channel URL. Um, is that worth sending out, John, when we send out the... Oh, the easiest is to uh, just in your browser type in YouTube Reckon HQ. Great, okay. YouTube Reckon and uh, you will quickly find it. We've got playlists um, and it's in, inside that playlist. There is a playlist for uh, Reckon uh, payroll. So yeah, yeah there's some very short videos there to, um, uh, to guide you through various functions in Reckon payroll. Yeah, okay.
Um, okay, I've got another question here. The end of financial year did not include salary sacrifice. Will this be incorporated in the new system when reporting to the ATO via STP? Salary sacrifice is being included, um, has always been included in STP reporting. Um, it come and it'll also impact on the RESC field. Right. Okay. So it um, should be there. It should, it should be, be there. there. Um, just, just be mindful um, with the old, uh, with the traditional view. In uh, when you created the STP report, all it showed you was the gross payments and gross tax withheld. It didn't show you the super, but it was there. Um, to see what is being transmitted to um, uh, in GovConnect, uh, you could uh, click on details, and that would show you the breakup of this week's uh, this pay cycle for each employee and that gets sent off to the ATO um, uh, tax agents portal and then a second click on each employee will show what was actually being posted to the MyGov account for that employee and in both of those you will see the super amounts. Very good and the last point here is just regarding the access um, the customer that mentioned that uh, said that they started with the admin access and it didn't work. So they best, is that best to contact the help desk, John, uh, yeah, the support help? Yeah, best to get to technical support um, and take a screenshot of the exact error message you get. Um, those uh, error messages uh, can be a bit different and they do indicate different errors. So it's always good to get a screenshot of the exact error, send that through to your uh, technical support and, the, uh, and that rep will have just a little bit more information to help them in to resolve the issue. Excellent. I think that's everything, John. Okay. So um, just having a very last look. Yeah, look, I think we've covered them all. So um, thank you everyone. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy navigating your way around and um, I hope you like like the new the new system. And as as mentioned, we'd be greatly appreciate if you can uh, just complete the short survey when you when you leave. And um, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to contact John and I. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.